Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part seven of my programming with Python 2.5 through 2.7 tutorial, but well, that was a mouthful. Today's tutorial is brought to you by this guy who informed me that his teacher is forcing him and other classmates to watch my videos. I want to commend this teacher, and I believe everyone out there should force people to watch my videos. <laughs> I only wish I knew the name of the school. Today, we're going to focus on object-oriented programming, and in the next tutorial, I'm going to do it as well. I normally try to cram this into one video, and I don't really think I do it justice, so today I'm going to explain what an object is, what an instance is, what encapsulation is, and how to make your attributes and methods private. By attributes, I am referring to what we previously called variables. Inside of object-oriented programming, this is the name that you're supposed to use for variables, and as well, functions are called methods. So you can look at those two things as being equal and it's just a jargon term so I wouldn't get too hung up on it unless you're taking a test on it I guess. Well to create a class which is just a blueprint on what every object must have in regards to attributes and methods all you use is the first name class followed by the name of the class that you want to create followed by a colon then I'm just gonna set a generic attribute here being hungry and I'm gonna give it the default value of yes then what I'm going to do is create what is called a constructor function. And this is a function that will be called every single time you create a new object. And it performs just basic upfront maintenance that you would want to have created. These are two underscores, I-N-I-T, and then two underscores. Self is a reference to the object you create. So whenever you create an object, that object's actually passed up here. And different changes and so forth are performed upon certain attributes of said object. Object. I'm just gonna pass on this because I don't really need to perform any real operations here at this point in time and I'm gonna jump up here and define another attribute called name and every animal is gonna have the default no name and owner no owner. So then we're going to jump down inside of here and talk a little bit about encapsulation. Through encapsulation what you're trying to do is make it hard for people to just come in here and willy-nilly change the values of hungry name and owner. So what you do, and I'm going to show you a, a nicer way to do this in the next tutorial, but I'm going to do it in a simple way right here. You normally would use the word set followed by the value that you plan to change. Self, again, reference to the object. And this is going to be the owner's name that is going to be passed to this method. And I'm sorry if I say function every once in a while. Here, I'm just going to define the value of the owner for this object and then return. And these are referred to as accessor functions, meaning that they provide access to attributes that are supposed to be hidden. I'm going to create get owner, and I don't need to get any information there. And whenever this is called, it's just going to shoot back whoever owns said animal. And I'm also going to create a method that I'm going to call noise and it is just going to print to the screen er. Okay, there's a basic class and now I'm going to show you how to create an object from this. As you know from previous tutorials and if you haven't watched the other tutorials you probably already shut this off but either way you should definitely watch those. This is looking for a function main in here to call so I'm going to create one and I'm going to create a new object that I'm going to call dog and how I do that is this line right here. I'm calling actually this guy up here to create this new object called dog. A class is just a blueprint for how to create objects. That's all it is. And if I want to set the owner, I just call this method. And I'm just going to say that Sue is the owner. And then here, I'm going to retrieve that value I just set with get owner, right like that. And you can see that Sue pops up. See, I set the owner to Sue, even though it previously was set to no owner. And you can see here, this method right here printed Sue out onto the screen. Now this is kind of encapsulation, but not real encapsulation. For real encapsulation, you have to make it impossible for people to get a hold of this, or at least make it really hard. Because as you can see, I can get a hold of the owner without calling this method right here. What I'm going to do is type in dog.owner, and you can see Sue prints twice now. With true encapsulation, you want to make this very, very hard to do, and it's really simple to do it. All you need to do is come up here and put two dashes, and again, two dashes, and two dashes. Now these were what we call private attributes, and if we come in here and do the same, you can see if I try to print out owner, 
errors, 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 errors. You can see the first suit printed, and then this one caused all kinds of errors. But this one's still printed, and this is encapsulation. It hides attributes away so that people can't willy-nilly come in here and just change variables that you don't want them to change. So that's what it means. It's encapsulated. It's hidden from the world. And now we can come in here also and call the method noise just simply like this, hit F5, and you can see that error shows up here on the screen. I'm gonna create a couple new different methods. Like for example, let's say I want to create a method that is also hidden, real simple. Again, two underscores, and I'll just call this hidden method, just to give it a name. Print ard to find, and if you scroll down here and hit dog dot underscore hidden method, you can see again that I got another error. So there is a way to actually encapsulate these methods. Now to keep this simple, I'm just gonna call this method that is hidden from inside of one of these other methods. And that is in fact how you do it. And how you do it is self, again, the object, followed by the name of the method that you wanna print out. And if you click on this, you can see that that indeed did print out to the screen. And again, you would probably want to also create different accessor methods. Again, I'm going to show you a really intricate, neat way to do this in the next tutorial for all of your additional attributes inside of Python. And you can do it just that simple. And there you have accessor methods that allow you to change the name of the animal just that easily. And yes, indeed, there is what, are, what is called a deconstructor and... It is of the form of DEL. And basically what I mean by de deconstructor is that it's a garbage collector. It is called whenever you no longer need the object. And whenever you call this method, it actually deletes the object from Python. But the deconstructor method, unlike other programming languages, is not often used with the py Python programming language. So There's just a basic run through of how to create methods, how to create private methods and attributes and private attributes inside of Python using this example. Again, in the next tutorial, I'm I'm going to cover a lot more complicated things. I'm going to teach you how to make a really, really flexible, like instead of having to create all of these gazillion different types of methods to change things, I'm going to show you a really neat and interesting way to do this. And I'm going to show you how to create objects that are actually made up from two different classes and review a bunch of functions that allow you to analyze objects and classes. And of course, the granddaddy of them all, I'm gonna to totally explain polymorphism using the same sort of animal example. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. I do answer them. Till next time.